Today we're prepping choir and going to spawn a shoebox. So I don't know what brand of cocoa you guys are using. I like to use Canna brand cocoa. It's a very good quality stuff. It has very fine fibers and absorbs a lot of water. Um, as you can see, these come in lobes. There's uh, two, two, one, two lobes in one of these bags. And uh, you just break them in half. So break these in the middle. And look at that, an uneven break. So no surprise there. Uh, in that case, I just cleaned it up and put it over to the side that it belongs to. Now I'm going to put this back in the bag and just deal with this one here. So let's see how much this weighs. Eight hundred and sixty one grams. So I find that these things will fluctuate This side is going to be more than that one and you know one it could go anywhere between 800 and the heaviest one I saw was uh, 1100 grams, I believe so this is how I'm going to prep it um, I'm going to use I have two different color Buckets that I use this one is my measuring bucket usually my orange buckets that I have stacked over there are Reserved for grain. Uh, this is the only exception. I use this for measuring out uh, all of my water and substrate. Now, the reason why I color code is because you don't want to be prepping grains in the same buckets that you're putting your substrate in because you run the risk of having cross contamination between starches, etc. That once you have your uh, stuff all spawned out, you know, you're going to wind up with trichoderma or something and uh, you're not going to know where it came from. So, Pro tip, don't mix your stuff together and don't cross contaminate. Now in this blue bucket, I've already mixed together my sub. I put my lobe of can acquire in here and uh, three full liters of vermiculite and five liters of water. Now the reason why I use five liters of water is because you want as much water available for your mushrooms as possible. Um, the more water reserve, the more you're going to be able to uh, max out your harvest because mushrooms are made out of water, right? Only makes sense. I use piping hot water out of my tap. There's no need to boil it. There's no need to pasteurize your substrate. Uh, even though you're going to get sort of a semi-sterilization, semi-pasteurization from uh, the hot water, I don't use it for that reason. That's not my intention. The reason is because is cold water isn't going to soften the fibers of your substrate. Um, when you have the coarse... Uh, choir fibers in there that have been hydrated with cold water. They're just not going to absorb as much water So you're going to get more water reserve from using hot water uh, The same goes with vermiculite. You can run this stuff obviously on its own You don't need vermiculite, but you're going to be able to hold more water in your substrate with verm And that's the whole point of having a substrate to begin with is to have a, uh, a Water reserve for your mushrooms to draw from Okay, so I haven't gone through all that. Maybe after hearing it, you're like, no man, I don't like that recipe. That recipe fucking sucks. So give me a good recipe. The standard recipe is 650 grams of coir, three liters of verm, four liters of water. Boom, there you go. Now, if you don't like mine, you can use that one. Even though, uh, you know, if you have a lot of um, experience using the standard recipe, I recommend you make a switch and just see how much you like it or run a couple side by side. I don't know, but I'm telling you, you're going to like it. So now that we got everything all expanded overnight and cooled down, everything like that, uh, when I measure out my uh, portions of coir, you can see that I never like to cross-contaminate this one. Clearly, it's for grain. Don't use that one, just in case, you know. But uh, this one here, it's nice and clean. It's only ever used for substrate, so no risk whatsoever of cross-contamination. Next thing's next. We got ourselves some nice clean spawn here. Noticed how... With this spawn, it's all evenly, I mean, I got a little bit of condensation there, but my uh, my room gets down uh, pretty low in temperature at nighttime, so you'll notice a little bit more condensation when the temperature fluctuates. Anyways, unlike the bacterial spawn I showed you before, this is uh, all grown together nicely, and um, there's no grains that have refused to colonize. So this is what I'm going to be using as my spawn for my shoebox. Shoebox is the purple latch 15 quart 
Uh, shoe box you can probably get it at Target, Walmart, etc. I'm in Canada, so Canadian Tire it is. So uh, a note on side and bottom pins. So you'll see a lot of people online, whether they're selling these things or, you know, giving you tutorials on how to make them. They're either spray painting the outside or wrapping them <clears throat> with tape or something like that. That's uh, asinine. That's not going to do anything. The reason why you get side pins is because your substrate, once it's in there, it's not, uh, it leaves little air pockets. You know, it's not perfectly sealed up against your plastic. So what happens is those little moist air pockets are great areas for pins to form. And, uh, you know, the same goes for the bottom. You're going to get pins. The only way to prevent that is um, to use a trash, uh, you know, some sort of plastic bag. The plastic bag, especially when doing penis envy or something like that, that takes a little bit longer to fruit and will drop a lot of water into the fruits themselves. What's going to happen is, is the substrate is going to pull away from the side, leaving an air gap, which is going to create side pins. Now, the way to prevent that, as mentioned a minute ago, you put a plastic liner in there. The plastic liner shrink wraps basically to the outside of your um, substrate and shrinks with your substrate and it doesn't give you side pins. Uh, having light penetrate in here, also not going to cause side pins. You could easily use a clear plastic bag if you like. Light is not going to cause side pins. So having said that, let's get this thing spawned. Now, you can see it's all been shaken up, mixed together. Um, when, sat, when sitting overnight to cool, what's going to happen is obviously a lot of the water is going to sink to the bottom and some of the vermiculite is going to stick to the bottom as well. And no matter how much you pick this up and shake it around, there's still going to be a bed of vermiculite on the bottom. So throw on some gloves, you know, so you don't get that shit under your fingernails. Dig in there, mix it all up a little bit until, you know, you're good to go. Now, let's get this shoebox bond. With healthy spawn, your spawn should break up pretty easily. Shouldn't require too much smashing or, you know, too much of anything. All right, so for this shoe box, got one quart of spawn. One, two, three. So I got four, four full liters of substrate in this shoe box. Give it a good shake to uh, mix it all up and give it a good compression. Making sure that the substrate is nice and level. Get it in the corners there. top layer. Compress it all down nice and neat so it's nice and level. Compress it around all sides and there you go. Your shoe box is full all the way to the top. Okay so this is what your shoe box is going to look like fully spawned as you can tell. It's all the way to the top. Now your Average shoe box is only going to be spawned with about that much substrate in it. It's going to allow some head space for uh, pins to form, etc. Uh, I find that, you know, that's a great method. It works well for many people. The drawbacks to that is that, as mentioned earlier in the video, with only this much substrate, that's only that much water. And honestly, if you think about it, the only reason you have this substrate in here at all Literally, the only reason is to provide a water sink, a reservoir for your mushrooms to grow. You can um, fruit straight grains if you want to. Uh, mushrooms will grow off them, but it's not uh, a great flush. It doesn't perform well because there's just not enough water. And so we uh, remedy that situation by adding substrate. And that's how you get mushrooms. So 
If you think about it, the more of this you can add, the more substrate, the more water within reason, and I think this is within reason, this is a one to six spawn ratio, one part spawn, six parts substrate roughly. I mean, it's not exactly that, but you get what I'm saying, just for ease of explanation. Uh, and then you put the lid on and allow to colonize. Now, when this, uh, obviously you're not gonna be able to get any mushrooms to pin in there, so. Uh, the way you work around that is to create a fruiting chamber, and uh, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so you allow, once uh, spawned, you allow this to sit on your shelf and colonize as per usual. I don't know if you can tell here, but there's about this much substrate, and the rest of it is about an inch, an inch and a half of uh, top layer. Now, uh, I failed to mention this before, but for whatever reason, Penis Envy uh, is a mutant uh, variety that likes to blob. Uh, oftentimes you need a casing layer, whether it be Jiffy or some peat-based casing layer. Uh, I found that those are no longer necessary. If you use a thick, compressed top layer, it will actually um, prevent blobs for whatever reason. I don't know what the mechanism is, but it does work. Um, so on to the fruiting chamber. Now, I like to use these sweater boxes if you have a single solitary shoe box they fit perfectly in here as you can see the holes on the top are quarter inch holes these are the pasty easy dial uh, monotub configuration just google that uh, you can find the instructions on the shroomery you can see just above the substrate level here that there if this was to be filled with substrate that is there is some um, uh, holes here to allow for fresh air exchange now when it's time to fruit, this fits perfectly in there. If you only have one shoe box, you're doing this for microdosing, you know, etc. This is great for one shoe box. Now you would take the lid off, obviously, if this was fully colonized, put the lid on here, put back on your shelf, and this is the container where it will fruit plenty of headspace to get mushrooms. Now, uh, should you have more than one of these, I recommend getting a large tote. Um, larger than the 66 quart and you can line probably three or four of these in there I can't remember but you can line them side by side um, by spawning into individual shoe boxes with uh, individual grains of uh, spawn you can ensure that you're not mixing compromised spawn together so if you're unsure of the quality of your spawn it's great to spawn into individual shoe boxes. That way, if one goes bad and the other three spawn jars that you had were good, you don't risk contaminating the whole batch. You can just run them individually and keep them uh, separated that way. Now, the next thing is you have all of this substrate left over. Should you have only enough spawn for one uh, shoe box, you're going to have all this left over. Uh, it's not very often that you're only going to spawn one shoe box, but if that's the case, there's no problem whatsoever with just sticking this lid on and putting it away for however long you want. So long as you do not introduce, introduce some sort of uh, nutritional source like a starch or you drop a grain in there or otherwise contaminate it, it's not going to contaminate. I've had this particular bucket sitting around for months. And you can see it's still, you know, slightly hydrated. There's no mold in here. There's nothing going on. Unless you introduce a contaminant, it's going to be fine. You can let this sit around for however long you want, and then you can rehydrate it and reuse it later. There's no need to throw this out, so don't worry. If you're only going to make one shoe box, making this uh, big batch isn't going to cause you any problems. Just hold it aside. Keep it for a later date. No problem.